March primary in Ohio was thrown into disarray when the governor postponed it the day before. Now, voting rights groups have filed a lawsuit. That is one of the stories you'll find in Capital Letter. That is the daily newsletter from Cleveland.com. And reporter Andrew Tobias joins me now to talk more about it. Andrew, it's good to see you. Always good to see you, too. Uh, previous cases have been filed in state court, and most of those have centered around the new date for the primary, which is now April 28th. Who are the plaintiffs in this case, and what are they looking for? So the plaintiffs include the ACLU, the League of Women Voters of Ohio, and the A. Philip Randolph Institute. It's a group of voter rights groups. And generally speaking, they think that the election is now too soon. They want to move it back. They have concerns that there are no in-person voting options uh, for most people. There are some limited exceptions under the current plan for the disabled and the homeless, but they want to make sure that there are options, I guess, for the people who prefer that. And they're also looking to reopen voter registration. Uh, right now, the voter registration cutoff was February 18, which is about a month before the date on March 17 when the election was supposed to be. And they reason now that they're moving it back six weeks and I guess possibly more if they have their way, that they feel like people didn't have, it's too much time has passed, people may have moved and that kind of thing. And they think it could ultimately all add up to people being disenfranchised. Given the threat with the coronavirus pandemic, most of the voting uh, will be done by absentee, which is something that voting rights groups tend to support. What are their concerns about its use this time? So there are certain groups, um, you know, the African-American community, uh, for example, do you tend to hear that it's a, they, they prefer to uh, vote in person? They have concerns about the mail being secure and that kind of thing. And that's something that the A. Philip Randolph Institute raised specifically. And furthermore, if they're going to be doing a full, uh, for the most part, all-mail vote, they feel like they need more time to both educate the public and how it's going to work. I know personally as a reporter, I've gotten a lot of uh, emails from people who are confused about how the process is going to work, as well as to make sure that elections workers have time to send out the mailings, give people time to look at them, receive them, get processed, and that kind of stuff. So it, it really has to do less with, they like voting by mail, but it's, it's some of it has to do with the state-specific process that they laid out in this plan that we're currently doing. Let's talk more about that process. Uh, what does it involve? What, uh, what are each steps that the state's uh, wants voters to follow under these circumstances. So right now the plan is that in a few days or so, uh, they're planning to send out postcards to every registered voter in the state. It will lay out how you have to apply for an absentee ballot application, which involves uh, going online and, and basically filling out some prompts at your county board of elections and having them mail it to you. Or you can also ca call the county board of elections where you register to vote and they will mail you, uh, I'm sorry, you can also print off an absentee ballot application if you have the capability of doing so. Once you fill that in, uh, fill it out, you send it in, and they will mail you back a postage paid envelope with a blank ballot on it. So the concern is that uh, people, when you, ha you have to actually fill out the application first, and that process may mean if you don't have a printer, it could be hard. If you don't have a computer, it could be hard. If you don't have postage or you don't want to go get postage, that could be hard. So there are various hardships that are uh, built into the process right now, which uh, just make it a little complicated, but also potentially uh, prevent people, arguably. So that's kind of the basis of the lawsuit right now. This is in federal court, which doesn't necessarily move with the speed of most state courts. Uh, what should voters do now going forward uh, as they wait for some sort of potential ruling here? So there was a hearing today, uh, which is we're recording this on Tuesday uh, in the afternoon, and they're trying to set a schedule for it. So there's some indications the federal court may move quickly. But in the meantime, uh, both the elections officials that I talked to, as well as the uh, some of the people who are involved with this lawsuit say voters can go ahead and, and start the process. Uh, the if there is a result from this lawsuit, if anything, it's going to open it up, give people more time and give people more options. It's not going to give them less. So uh, basically, they said that you can go ahead and uh, elections officials are encouraging people to start the process right now. And you can find out more about this, by the way, at vote.ohio.gov. Andrew Tobias with Cleveland.com. Andrew, thank you. Thank you. And to get Capital Lever Letter delivered into your inbox each morning, simply subscribe by logging on to cleveland.com slash Capital Letter.